you know, the um, the, the saints down here on earth, our prayers are collected, you know, in a bowl, mm -hmm. bowels, bowls, our prayers are collected. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they are acceptable, coming from the heart, sincere, those prayers are collected inside of a bow, bowl. Angel comes and gets them and he collects them. And uh, not only our prayers, but the prayers of others. And we go, we went into some scriptures. I'm not going that way today. Just give you a few highlights. How that, the, not only our prayers, but you know angels. There's a certain class of angels that pray too. Y'all didn't know that, did you? It's in the Bible. I'm not going to tell you something that's not in the Bible. There's a certain class of angels that pray. And their prayers are collected. And their prayers are put inside of that vial of that golden bowl. Along with the prayers of the saints. And then, of course, there are prayers of, um, it's in the scripture, where saints in heaven. You know, I mean, they don't hear you pray. Angels don't hear you pray. Only God hears man pray. Jesus is the mediator between God and man. But God, at times, according to the scriptures, He releases and, and, and select saints that have gone on before us to pray. They are the cloud of witnesses you read about in the book of Hebrews. A lot of them pray. Y'all probably didn't know that. You thought maybe just get to heaven and just float around on a cloud all day. You know, like that song they used to sing, when I get to heaven. But it goes way beyond what our little finite minds can imagine. But he collect our prayers, he collect, I mean, it's right there. I believe it's in Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 30, 31, how that um, speaks about because I couldn't find no man to stand in the gap. I allowed this to happen and that to happen. But also the prayers, our prayers, angels, prayers, the prayers of the saints that have gone on ahead of us. That's right. And this is not Catholicism. I know what the Catholics believe. The Catholics believe you can pray to Blessed Mary. You can pray to some statue. And all of that stuff. I don't believe in all that idolatry. We have to stay with the pure word. And then, fourth, of course, there is the um, Holy Ghost makes intercessions for us. Don't they? The Spirit makes intercessions with groanings at times which cannot be uttered. Is that right? And you read over there in um, um, you read about these seven spirits in Isaiah 11. You read about these seven lampstands and the seven candlesticks over there in the book of Revelations which represent the seven spirits of God. Spirit of wisdom, spirit of the Lord, spirit of might, all of these seven spirits. And in the book of Revelation, it, it, it talks about how they're like a, um, a flame pleading for us. I don't want to go too deep in it. But then, Jesus is at the right hand of the magistrate, making intercession as our high priest. And all of these prayers are presented to Jesus. And Jesus take them and pour them out in the uh, coals of fire in heaven. And there the Father receives them 
and answers and, and it's, it's a lot of depths that I don't want to confuse you with. I'm just going to uh, leave it right there. All right. But I'm letting you know behind the scene, your prayers, and they're poured out into the earth. When they're poured out into the earth, that's when we're going to see one of the greatest, most outrageous revivals the world has ever we not um, speaking about theology. I, theology is ideas of man and man's own theory. I don't believe in all of that. Bible says speak with sound doctrine. What cannot be condemned. So if you don't understand what I'm saying is in the scriptures about mysteries of God. Many of them. A lot of things are hidden from man but it's going to be revealed in our generation. Because the end is upon us. And things that angels have designed to look into is going to be demonstrated in us and through us. And it's going to be such a power, such a move, that um, a lot of us think that, wish that we was back in the days of um, Paul. But Paul wants to be in our day with what he sees coming. Elijah wants to be in your day. Moses wants to be in your day because what these men saw that was coming, it's for us. We are the generation upon which the ends of the world has come upon. And God's going to not just select. In the Old Testament, God selected to pour out His Spirit here. Pour out His Spirit there. He poured out His Spirit upon kings priests, prophets, and uh, he poured out his spirit of all judges for different types of ministries back in those days. But it came upon them, not in them. These are the days God is going to pour out his spirit in us. And it's not going to be a selected few, but it's going to, he said, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. It's going to come in such a force in such a power, in such an outpouring. Because Jesus is fixing to come. He's going to do a quick work. And cut it short in righteousness. Amen. And if it had poured out, it's going to come. I remember a vision the man of God had like liquid fire. Like golden oil being poured out. And just one drop of this latter rain is what it's poured out upon you. It's going to drive every sickness out, every disease out. This power that's coming is going to be so overwhelming and so uh, strong until no weapon formed against it is going to prosper. Every tongue that speak against it is going to be condemned in judgment. When the enemy come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord it's going to lift up a standard against it. You're going to understand what the scripture means. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Something supernatural, something great is fixing to come inside of us that even angels haven't seen. Angels, man, they, they just saw the creation. They just saw everything. But angels, this is something that angels hadn't, hadn't witnessed. Hallelujah. Glory. In such a time as this, God is fixing to come with a mighty demonstration of His power like the world have never witnessed. Hallelujah. He said, my thoughts of you are not to destroy you. Amen, God. God didn't come to destroy the world. He come to the world, the whole world might be saved. Y'all remember the old tradition on save me, Lord. Save me, Lord. The church of God in Christ. And save me, Lord. Save me, Lord. Save me, Lord. Y'all remember that? I mean, y'all have been out of that tradition so long, y'all have forgot it? No, I ain't forgot it. Save me, Lord. 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 Well, he saved us 2,000 years ago. God so loved the world 
that they gave his only begotten son, that whoever believed, whosoever believed in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. 2,000 years ago, Jesus died for us. 2,000 years ago, Jesus healed us. 2,000 years ago, he forgave us, but we need the gospel to hear it and to accept it, and then we have to accept what was already done. It's already, price has already been paid. You should know the truth, and the truth makes us free. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word, by the word. And when we hear that we, we have already paid for our redemption, then we accept it, we believe it, and then it becomes a reality in us. Hallelujah. So let's get let's get beyond. Save me, Lord. Save me, Lord. Save me, Lord. <laughs> let's get beyond just repenting all the time. Let's come on into a place where He can walk in us. I will. You're my temple. I want to walk in you. I want to talk in you. I want to live in you. I want to reveal myself to the world through you. I want you to be the light to this world. The light that shines in the darkness. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And aren't y'all tired of being, you know, that was uh, to understand, you know, a lot of the uh, full understanding of things that were spoken in the New Testament. A lot of times we have to go back to the old to get the foundation, to get the pattern that originally was created for us from the pattern of heaven. Tap, there's a, there is a, um, you read it in the Old Testament, I'm sure you read about, there is an outer court, you know, an outer court, where a lot of the people dwell. Some people never got beyond that. Then there's an inner court, it brings you closer, don't it, to God. And then as a, the um, place where God himself dwelt, that Shekinah glory, the most holy place. Well, God wants us to, he don't want us to stay on the outside, the outer courts, constantly repenting, constantly saying, save me, Lord, forgive me, Lord, I'm sorry, Lord, let's get beyond that. Let's go on into the fullness. Let's go on into the manifestation of the sons of God. Let's go on into the place where Jesus said, Where I am, there you may be also. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God? Believe in me. In my Father's house, a many men, there's a realm for you earthlings. I have prepared a place for you that where I am, you may be also. Amen. Come on, come on, come on. Don't you want to go? Come on, come on, come on. Don't you want to go? Come on, come on, come on. Don't you want to go? Yes, I want to go. In my father's house. God don't want you to just constantly be on our... You know something going to be... A lot of people... Just going to barely make it to heaven. They're going to constantly, even in the heaven, they're going to be on the outside. Wondering what it was like, what it would be like to be in them. People think they're just going to walk up in heaven and just hug Jesus and hug Jesus. No, you're going you gonna to realize they, they reverence Him, they respect Him in heaven more than we do on earth. We call Him Jesus. We call Him Jesus Christ. In heaven, they call Him Lord Jesus, everything bows in heaven. Everything reverence him in heaven. Everything. Down here on earth, we treat him like common. He's not the lamb anymore. He's Lord of Lords. Come on. King of Kings. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't just walk up into the White House and go greet the president. There's a procedure you go through. Well, in heaven, you know. You're going to find out. It ain't going to be just a common thing. He's going to appear to you according to 
your perception, according to your growth, according to your level. That's how he's going. And if your level has reached the maturity, you're going to see him in all of his glory. Thank you. And some people, all they're going to see is just a big bright light. Because the Bible said, the holiness without no man shall see the Lord. Ain't hey, that going to see a big old bright light? <laughs> Am I? Uh-oh. Am I going over the, over the edge with y'all? <laughs> We know we so earthly. All we know is earthly things. And if somebody starts talking to us about heavenly things, you know, not all. I'm just saying Come on. that there is a place where eyes haven't seen, where ears haven't heard, where it haven't entered into our hearts, what God has prepared for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And let's do everything we can to make it. I mean, God ain't the God of the dead. My wife ain't dead. She got more lives than y'all got. Y'all loved ones ain't dead. They got more lives than one that went with Jesus. They got more life. The dead, he said, I'm not the God of the dead. You know, witches, conjure, witches and warlocks, they talk to the dead and all that stuff. Talk to spirits, familiar spirits. Dead down there burning. They're locked up in prison. But to be absent from the body if you're a Christian is to be present with the Lord. Thank you. Is that right? Amen. So he's he's the God of the living. He ain't the God of them that are lost, cut off, in eternity, locked up, and waiting for to be cast into the lake. He's the God. He's the God of the living. Yes, Hallelujah. Amen. That's why, you know, we have this hope. That's why we have this faith. That's why we have this um, assurance. Because we know that to be absent from the body is what? To be burning in hell? To be dead in the grave? Huh? To be absent from the body, if you're a Christian, is to what? Present with the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. And you can't be praying to your loved one because you, 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 you're crossing over to Catholicism. That's what those uh, Catholics do. You go. You don't go around praying to to the loved ones, and you know. I mean, they ain't dead, but but they can't hear you. You don't pray to angels. The angels don't hear you. One mediator between God and man. Stick with the word, man. Man, Jesus Christ. Is that right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Him we live. In Him we move. In Him we have our very existence. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Any man come to the Father, he must come through me. I'm the door. Hallelujah. We know God through Jesus. So, and, and, and we don't follow all this other traditions. We stay with the pure Word of God. Word. Somebody can come to you having dreams, but them dreams better be based on the Word. They can come to you with, with um, angels, but them angels better come out that Bible. They, they can have all kinds of experiences, but the experiences better be based on the Word. Everything has to be based on the Word. Huh? What's written? Jesus told us. I believe it's in the book of James 4 and 8. And over there in um, Ephesians 2 and 27. It speaks about give no place to the devil. Stand up to him. Resist him. You resist him by standing up to him. You don't stand up to him through um, 
Paul said that what things was gained to me, I can't lost. You don't stand up to him through um, good things that was gained to you through religions. You stand up to him through the weapons of your warfare, which is mighty through Jesus Christ. Amen. You pull down lies and pull down sicknesses, pull down diseases. You pull down the um, accusations. You pull down the condemnation. Through Jesus, you pull down the attacks of the devil. Amen. The weapons of our warfare. Be strong in the Lord. Power of his might. Put on the whole arm of God. That you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. We're not wrestling with flesh and blood. But principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness, rulers of darkness in this world. Huh? I read in the scripture where one man was surrounded. He was a king. And he was surrounded and his whole nation was about to be overthrown by the enemy. And he began to pray and cry out for mercy. And God raised a prophet up in the midst of them. And the prophet, the word that came out of the prophet was said, Believe in the Lord, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. The battle is the Lord's, and it's not yours. He's going to fight this battle for you. Thank you. That's right. Y'all remember reading about a man like that? He, the battle belongs to God in 2023. He's going to fight. I remember back, um, I believe it was in 80, maybe been 84. When uh, you might remember, Brother Terrell was preaching in Mama Washington's church. And uh, he was preaching in, in, um, a message and, and gave an illustration about Muhammad Ali. How that Muhammad Ali, you know, how he went in the train and fought all those enemies, fought all of his opponents, not enemies, but all of his opponents. Brother Hunt, you remember how he fought and he won all those battles. And after he won all those battles, you know, he was crowned the champion. And after he was crowned the champion, he got all that paycheck, millions of dollars. And he brought that paycheck home. And his wife, that he was married to for 25 years, she got all that money. In other words, Muhammad, he was a conqueror. But she didn't have to scratch her hands. She didn't have to fight nobody. But she was more than a conqueror because everything Muhammad done, she got it. So that made her more than a conqueror. <laughs> but that was an illustration how that we have to fight the death of Jesus. I've already fought him. We didn't have to go to hell and take the keys of death and hell. Jesus went down there for us. He was wounded for our transgression. Yes, he was bruised for our iniquity. Yes. Chastisement of our peace was upon him. Yes. With his stripes, we are healed. Yes. He went ahead of us, defeated demons, right. defeated sin, right. defeated sickness, yes. shed his blood for all of our rebellious ways. Yes. He went ahead of us yes. and defeated the world and death and demon spirits and after he defeated went to hell took the keys of death and and and, and stripped Satan of his authority over us over humanity and Jesus won the victory and and, and then went back to heaven sent back his spirit and said in my name devil when when my sons and daughters when they call on my name through my name, you must be subject. Your sicknesses must be subject. Your diseases must be subject. 
the demons must be subject. In my name, I give unto them power to heal the sick, to cast out devils, to set the oppressed free, to take up you demon spirits and you scorpions. To, I give them, I beheld Satan when I went back into my body, my glorified body, went into heaven and took my blood and sprinkled it at the mercy seat. And the Father saw this. Then when all of this happened, he said, all power in heaven and earth is now given unto me. And through my name, my sons and my daughters are going to drive darkness and sin and diseases and alcoholic addiction. My, through my name, they're going to drive out these transgenders, these gays, these homosexuals, these bisexuals. They're going to drive out these queers. They're going to drive out this evil spirit that Satan is trying to corrupt. Hallelujah. Amen. So I thought God loved every devil, but he don't like the devil that's working in a lot of them. He don't like that spirit. He don't like that pervert spirit. When God created man, he didn't create man, you know. You know, I heard yesterday where this woke bunch, they tried to change the word amen to a woman. I said, Lord, they, done, they, they really messed up. They going deep off the, off the scene. That's right. You know, they, they try to be what you call socially correct. It ain't politically correct. It ain't biblically correct. It's corruption. You know. Yes, sir. God, you bless a woman. You know what? You see what I'm trying to say? They're trying to corrupt. Trying to pervert. That's why we need Jesus. To come here and straighten this mess up again. And you better believe he's going to come back and straighten all this mess up. Me and Brother Ephraim was talking. When he first came, he came as the um, Lamb of God. Didn't he? Came to bear all of these sins and sickness and diseases. And you right, and you read about that, the Lamb of God, you read about that several times in the New Testament. But in the book of Revelation, you read where he came, he's coming back as the Lamb. You read it one time. The Lamb of the tribe of Judah. In other words, the first time I came, I came to bear your sins. I came to carry your diseases. I came to carry your grief. I came to carry all of these things for you. But the second time I'm coming as a I'm coming as the lamb of the tribe of Judah. I'm coming as your judge. I'm not coming as your savior, but as your judge. To judge them that have rejected me. To judge them. He's gonna come as of course as a lamb to 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 execute his power, to execute his dominion over everything, but yet he's coming back as a lamb to judge. To You know, you read in the Bible in the book of Luke chapter 4, and I think it starts at verse 18. He said, if, um, The Spirit of the Lord is up upon me. He have anointed me to what? Preach the gospel. To the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, mm -hmm. to set a liberty to them that are bruised, to preach, huh? And and he was quoting from Isaiah. Was it? Where is it at in the book of Isaiah sixty or sixty one? Let's go to these two and let's compare them for just a moment. I believe it's Isaiah sixty. Maybe. And uh, then over there in uh, Luke chapter 4. And let's do a, 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 a little comparison here. You got it? Yes, sir. Isaiah 6, what, 60 or 61? 61 and what verse? Huh? 
Okay. The, the Spirit of the Lord. Listen, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Now, I'm not going to go into a, a bunch of depths here, but that's the first of these seven spirits in Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 2 about these seven spirits. The Spirit of the Lord is the first of these seven spirits that's going to go throughout the whole earth in these last days. Oh, I tell you, I feel like I just stepped out of Come on. Um, Come on. The third uh, three feet and the seven feet. <laughs> this quick. <laughs> but listen here. The Spirit The Spirit of the Lord uh -huh. is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings yes. unto the meek. Wait, that's an idea. Go ahead. He hath set me to bind up the broken heart. Yes. To pro proclaim liberty to the captives. Uh-huh. And the opening of the prisons to them that are bound. Yes. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Yeah, that's good. Go ahead. And the day of vengeance of our God. Stop right there. Now go to Luke chapter 4. And verse 17. And there was delivered unto him. And that was delivered unto him. The book of the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah. What chapter you just read out of? 60? 61. 61. Verse, okay. Now, Jesus is quoting from Isaiah 61. Go ahead. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. Chapter 61. And when he had opened the book. Yes. He found the place where it was written. Uh -huh. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Yes. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Uh -huh. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Same thing, isn't it? Go ahead. To preach deliverance to the captives. Yes. And recovery of sight to the blind. Uh -huh. To set at liberty them that are bruised. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Uh huh. And when he had closed the wait book. Wait a minute, wait a minute. That ain't all I was just saying. I just spoke about one more thing too. That Jesus purposely left out. What was it? The day of vengeance. The day of vengeance. That is what I mean by he's coming back as a lamb. To bring vengeance. Upon all those that reject him. All those that don't follow him. He's coming back to bring vengeance. As a lamb. He first come as a lamb. Didn't he? Now he's coming back as the lamb. Not just. But he's coming as a lamb too. With the nature of the lamb. Naturally. But yet. The last part of his ministry is to be executed in our day. And that last part is to execute judgment, vengeance upon them that have rejected him. That's that loud part of him. I, he shall roar out of Zion over that jo Joel. He shall, like a lion, he's going to roar against the devil and his crown. He's going to roar against the perversion, against the ungodly, against the evil. He's going to roar like a lion. You didn't receive him as a lamb, so now I'm going to roar like a lion. Yes. Now you understand. That's the day of the Lord. That's what we have entered into. The lamb is fixing to appear now. Hallelujah. There ain't going to be no... I mean, time is run out. We don't have a whole lot of time to be in and out of church. To be wishy-washy. Be up and down. If we make it through this year, we're going to have to develop a prayer life and it's going to have to be a revelation. I mean, it's going to have to be a uh, relationship that cannot be broken. Something that we're going to have to do every day. I'm telling you right now, if you're going to make it through 2023. I mean, look at 2020. Look at what happened. Um, 2019. 
December the 29th, when that uh, COVID, that Corona virus come out of China and hit. Look at how we lost in two years over a million people. And how that throughout the world, about seven or eight million people was lost. And now a lot of people have long-term COVID effects. And now it's constantly, you know, showing its ugly face again. See what? All of that was just a mild shaking. He said, I'm going to send another shaking now. And this shaking is going to be more than what you experienced in 2020. 2021. 20, see, 2022 will last for a little bit. But he said, I'm finished to send another shaking. Man, that thing shook the whole world. Yes. Uh -huh. Oh, 200 nations were shaken. Every nation was locked down. Everybody was under this thing. You had a thousand people dying a day just in, you know, hospital in New York. Thousand people dying a day. And they have no cure. A whole year, people were scared. Nothing to cure. This was a shaking. But God then is in another shaking. Or that Haggai. I believe it's Haggai chapter 2. And over there in Hebrews chapter 12. Read that a little bit. Can we read a little bit of this? Let's read a little bit. Hebrews chapter 12. And uh, somewhere down. Whose what, voice then what shook verse the earth? 26. Hebrews 12 and verse 26. Uh huh. Whose voice then shook the earth. Whose voice then shook the earth. But now he had promised, saying. But now he's promised, saying. Yet once more I shake not the earth only. Not just the earth. But also heaven. But also heaven. And this word. Uh huh. Yet once signifying the, the removing of those things that are shaken. As of the things that are made. Everything fit to be shook. That those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Uh huh. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom. But thank God, in the midst of this shaking, this shaking, it speaks about, in, um, I believe it's in Revelations chapter 6, and in Matthew chapter 24, starting at verse 4 through verse 8, it speaks about the shaking. How that, the first part of that shaking, and I brought it out here, and I brought it out in Joplin. About four things that six to be shaken. The first part of that shaking was what? Read it. Matthew 4. Matthew 24 and verse 8. I mean, Matthew 24 and verse 4, I believe. Read it. 24 and verse 4. And go through verse 8. And Jesus answered and said unto them. Jesus answered and said unto them. Take heed. Take heed. That no man deceive you. Don't let nobody deceive you. For many shall come in my name. Oh God, help us. We need to make sure that we stay close to God. And stay in the word. The devil is going to come and try to deceive the very elect if it was possible. You know, it don't take all that praying. I mean, people that have left this Lamb of God ministry have went to the other side and they have denounced taking up the cross. They don't preach fasting and praying and denying yourself. They don't preach the whole counsel of God like we have been established upon. Do they? They just preach an easy way. They preach, don't worry about it. Don't have to worry about it. all of this and all of that. But finish reading that. For many shall come in my name. Many shall come in my name. Saying, I am Christ. Saying, I am Christ. And shall deceive many. Many is going to be deceived. They, uh, I am Christ. For I have been anointed by Christ. I've been sent by Christ. You see them on YouTube. You see them on Facebook. Saying the Lord, the Lord said this. And the Lord said that. But a lot of it coming out of their own imagination. That's when you have to know the word yourself. That's when you have to know the Spirit of God from all of this. If anybody says something, it don't line up with the Word, you better not 
Accept it. You better not open your heart and your spirit to it. Amen. Go ahead. And ye shall hear of wars. Well, look at Ukraine. Ukraine. And look at Russia. For no reason at all, we don't end bombing those people up. And look at how Korea, North Korea, shooting missiles over there toward Japan, building up their military. Look at how China is fixing to try to attack uh, Taiwan. I mean, and there's other eruptions where the, the, the world is on a powder cage. Uh, I mean, uh, it don't take much for things to erupt. God is fixing to send all kind of wars. Man, there's a war in the White House between the Republicans and Democrats. Amen. There's a war between the, the, the gays and the, and the straight. <laughs> there's a war between the preachers trying to preach the truth and those that are compromised. Amen. There's a war between mama and daughter. Daughter wants to go her way and mama wants the daughter to live right. All kind of wars erupted. But, but anyway, there's some wars and what? And rumors of wars. Rumors of wars. It's going to increase as we go into 2023. It ain't going to settle down. Everything will become calm. And he said, when men say peace and safety, what? Sudden destruction is going to come upon them. See, when you think everything is calming down, when you think everything is going to be all right, then sudden destruction comes upon them. Why? Because the nations won't turn to God. The wicked shall be turned into hell. And all nations that forget God. Because they won't turn to God. God, is, God loves all people. He loved these people. He loved these people that minds have been warped and been deceived. By these perverted spirit, but he don't like that spirit. Amen. He don't like that sin that they're engaged in. Amen. He don't like that uncleanness that they are accepted. Amen. If they come through Jesus and get their lives cleaned up, then they'll become a new creature. Amen. And he will take that evil spirit out of them. He loved that soul, but not what that soul has wrapped itself around. Not what that person has allowed his heart to be open to. Let's put a difference between clean and unclean. Between holy and unholy. Huh? Yes, Jesus. He said study to show yourself approval. Right and divide in the word of truth. You got some people that say, oh God loves everybody. He loved the homosexuals. He loved that soul but not that homosexual spirit. Let's make a difference. Let's draw the line. Let's not make it look like God has become inclusive. Like Carlton Pearson said, inclusion. You know, everybody's included. I don't care if you're a homosexual. I don't care if you are a Muslim. I don't care if you're a Buddhist. I don't care if you're a Hindu. You're all inclusive. See, that's a lie. That's a doctrine from the devil. Doctrines of devils. Got people thinking that they're going to make it to heaven regardless. What? No. He said, no infeminine person is going to get to heaven. That's why. What they call a technology, a, a, a technical difficulty, I call the devil trying to stop this kind of word. Amen. Trying to block this kind of word. We've got to stay with the truth. Not compromise. I mean, if we're going to make it, we're going to make it through holiness. Through walking in the fear of God. Through obedience to the word. Somebody's going, that ain't the way I believe. God don't care about what you believe. believe. The word is what we're going to have to be judged by. We ain't going to be judged by what the Baptists believe, what the men to this belief, what the charismatic belief, what the Pentecostal belief, what the Church of God believe, what the Church of Christ. We ain't gonna be judged by all of that. We're gonna be judged by one man, and his name is Jesus. And he said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. We're gonna be judged by Jesus. You're not gonna have all these denominations in heaven. 
You're not going to have all this, all this stuff in heaven. In heaven, everybody, get that, they have to come through the blood. I don't care if the Baptist, God saved Baptist people. God saved Pentecostal. He saved Charismatics. He saved people, but they have to come through the blood. This is how he saves them, is when they come through the blood, then they're, 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 they're not coming in through the back door. They're not coming in through the window. They're not coming in through the chimney, but they're coming through the blood. Well, you come through the blood, then you're going to be sanctified. You come through the blood, your sins will be forgiven. You come to the blood, then all these things that the devil had you under, all of this is going to be, you're going to be delivered. The blood washes. The blood cleanses. The blood purges. The blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes. And all these labels are going to be laid down if we get in heaven. We're going to lay them down at the gates. Come on. <laughs> huh? We got to lay all these labels down at the gate. Jesus. 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 Who the man say that I am? Some say you're charismatic. Some say you're Baptist. Some say you're Pentecost Pen 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 stuff. Some say you're this. Some say you're that. But who do? The word says he is. The word says he is. What? The Christ, the living Son of God. Huh? Peter said, I know who you are. Mm -hmm. You are the Christ. Right. The Son of the living God. Yes. Yes. Jesus said, Blessed are thou, Simon Bar Joel. Yes. Flesh and blood have not revealed this. Rhema did reveal to Brother Ephraim Come on. the truth. Or are you did reveal to y'all the truth? Uh -uh. The truth is in. Can't got y'all talking? The truth is in. See, some of y'all still can't say the name. Something wrong with you. The truth is in. Jesus. Jesus said, I am. Way, truth, lie. The truth ain't in all these traditions. The truth ain't in all this denominationalism. Amen. Jesus. You ain't gonna get to heaven dragging some Christmas tree with you. You're not gonna get to heaven dragging some Easter body and a bunch of eggs with you. You get to heaven, you gotta come through the door. You gotta leave all these traditions at the door. All this denominationalism at the door. All these good works at the door. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, not, not by good works, but because of Jesus. His blood is what purges you. His stripes is what heals you. His death, burial, resurrection is what going to resurrect you. It's all in God, Jesus. Amen. 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 Tell you, a little lady, when you grow up, you gonna remember. I went to the church with my little grandma. I went to the church with grandma and with papa. And that preacher, all he preached about was Jesus. He preached Jesus. He preached we're saved through Jesus. We're healed through Jesus. Jesus is the way to heaven. That's right. I was telling somebody the other day, you know, they, they suffer a time with just Alzheimer's. They can't remember no names. I said, if you don't remember nothing else, you remember one name, and that's Jesus. <laughs> I said, you remember that name, and that'll get you to heaven. You remember the name of Jesus. I said, if death come knocking at your door, and you ain't got but one word to say, let that word be Jesus. <laughs> that's right. And he'll know what you're talking about. And he'll open the door. And he'll let you in. Whoever call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Remember the name of Jesus. What's your name? EJ? TJ? TJ? Remember Jesus. And you'll make it to heaven.
called on the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God gave him a name that's above every name. At the name of Jesus, every knee is going to bow. Yes, Lord. Things in heaven, in earth, under the earth. Presidents, prime ministers, vice president, governors, mayors, all these dignitaries, all these political leaders, everybody have got to come through Jesus. When it's all said and done, the only thing that God recognized is his son. And if you come through Jesus, you'll make it through 2023. Abide in him. Let his word abide in you. He that hear these sayings of mine and does them, I like him unto a wise man, build his house on the rock. The winds came, the floods came, the judgment came, the pledge came, the pestilence came, the death came. Came, but because you built up on that rock, yes. the gates of hell couldn't take your soul. The gates of hell couldn't prevail. The gates of hell couldn't keep you out of a life eternal. Jesus, 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 got him on my mind. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Got him on my mind. Well, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Got him on my mind. I've got Jesus on my mind. Well, when you see me coming. Got him on my mind. When you see me coming. Well, when you see me coming. Got him on my mind. You know. I got Jesus on my mind. Well, I woke up this morning with my mind. Stayed on Jesus. Well, I woke up this morning with my mind. Stayed on Jesus. I woke up this morning with my mind. Stayed on Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, oh, there is something about that name. He's the master, he's savior. Jesus, let all heaven and earth proclaim. And all kingdoms, they shall all pass away. But the name of Jesus shall remain. There is power, power, wonder working power. Of what? Hallelujah. There is power, power, oh, wonder working power. In that precious blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. How he came as a lamb. But now he's coming as a lamb. And everybody that don't have the nature of the lamb, they're going to experience the wrath of the lamb. Huh? We got to have the nature of the lamb. The love. What? What, what, what manner of love had God bestowed upon us that we should be called what? Sons of God. Is that right? See, he's coming back to conquer everything. Muhammad Ali got in that boxing ring and he conquered all of them. Didn't he? I believe one of the last men he conquered was... Uh, which one? George Foreman. And that was another before him that, you know, had a head like an iron. You know. <laughs> what was that man? Joe Frazier. Yeah. The man here and Joe Frazier, they went to all the whole 
distant. And and George and uh and uh, oh, uh Muhammad he said to his chant to his to his uh, trainer, he said, I ain't going back out there. If he get back up one more time, <laughs> both of them beat each other down. He said, I ain't going. But he didn't know. Joe Frazier told his trainer, throw in the towel. I can't take no more. <laughs> Joe Frazier threw in the towel. Hallelujah. And Muhammad, I mean, and he won, Muhammad won it. Because Joe Frazier, you know, just the devil is about to throw in the towel with what God fixes to bring us. The devil ain't going to be able to take all these beatings. And all this that God is fixing to give unto us. He going to have to throw in the towel. Just like he did in the days of Jesus. I know who you are. Leave us alone. You come to destroy us. Jesus said, shut up. Come out. Hold your peace. Didn't he? He came and defeated. He conquered sin. He conquered demon spirits. He conquered cancer. He conquered high blood pressure. He conquered these plagues. These 39 major diseases. Jesus conquered every one of them. And through him, we are more than a conqueror. He paid the price, but we take the paycheck. He paid the price, but we have the power. He paid the price, but he gave us his name to use it against these demons. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. I'll read just one scripture. Thank you, Lord. And we'll stop. See, this is gospel. Yes. I'll just read one scripture and we'll stop. That's over there in Colossians. One, then we'll stop. Colossians, I believe it's chapter 1, maybe 27. To whom God would make known. Well, that's not it, but that's a good one now. Read that one. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. Man, there's a mystery God fitted unveiled to the Gentiles. What is that mystery? Go ahead. Which is Christ in you. Uh, see, that's the mystery. That's fixing to be a veil. Who? Where did this man get this wisdom? Where did he get this power? How can he just speak to the sea? And speak to the wind? And speak to demons? How can this man, where did he get this great miracles and wonders and signs? A mystery to them. But Christ. But God was in Christ. He said, it's not me. It's the Father in me. Well, see, that's the mystery. Christ in us is going to do these same works. The works that I do, you're going to do. But this is the scripture that I'm getting to. Is in uh, Colossians 2 and 14, I believe. 14 and 15. Blotting out the handwriting. See, blotted out the handwriting ordinances all these things that the devil is using over your head as I was telling people yesterday morning there's a difference between conviction and condemnation condemnation you know conviction is when like Peter was told Peter you go out to pray because what's coming if you don't pray you're going to enter into temptation. And you're going to deny me. And all of y'all are going to forsake me and hide. But they didn't listen. And they entered into the condemnation. And Peter, weeping bitterly, because he knew he had failed the Lord. After the third time the rooster crowed, Jesus happened to be passing by the third time. And looked at Peter with compassion, with mercy. And Peter, God restored him back. 
because the conviction caused them to repent and to re be restored back into favor. But condemnation is when Judas went out and denied and betrayed Jesus. And when Judas denied him and betrayed him, then condemnation hit him. The devil brought condemnation. You know, the devil, he will have you doing something. Oh, it's all right. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's going to be all right. Yeah. Nobody's seeing it. Nobody hearing it. Nobody watching. And after you do it, the devil said, oh, see that? You hypocrite. You're supposed to be saved. You and you even trying to go to church now. Everybody know what you are. You know in your heart. You wrong. See, that's condemnation. See, the devil will try to have her to do something and beat you down over it. Right. That's condemnation. Yeah. And Judas went out and what? Hung himself yes, under that condemnation. Yes, but Peter went out and what? Repented because of conviction. Yeah. See, the Spirit of God come to convict us, not to beat us down, not to put a guilt trip on us, not to condemn us. Amen. But the spirit of the devil comes to beat us down, to condemn us, to tell us that look at you. So every time you have to pray, look at you. You know you ain't been, you know, you, you know, try to condemn us. Yeah. Uh, he, the accuser of the brethren, try to accuse us. Yeah. Rob us of the peace. Rob us of the victory. Rob us of the faith. Yeah. You see the difference? Huh? The devil get behind me. Jesus said, I write that you don't see him. But then if you do see him, you have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ. Through him we are forgiven. Through him we have compassion. Through him we have mercy. Father, we thank you. Help us. Help us. God, give them nothing but your pure word. From, from start to finish. Nothing but the sound doctrine of the gospel. Take these words. God, strengthen, carriage, equip us, prepare us to fight this good fight of faith. Lord, with what we're going to be facing in 2023, help us not to go into this year with condemnation. Lord, if there is conviction, Jesus. you have already told us, you're right, that we don't sin. But if we do stumble, if we do fall, we have an advocate, Jesus Christ the righteous. So Lord, help us to continually yes, Lord. abide in the truth. Yes. That we don't fall, we don't falter, we don't allow the enemy to beat us down. Jesus, let your mercy and grace go with us this year, 2023. A thousand may fall at our side. Ten thousand now right hand. But if we abide in you, in this gospel of Jesus Christ abide in us, the devil cannot come and destroy us. Heal those that need to be healed. Deliver those that needs to be delivered. Take this gospel, which is the power of God, that brings healing, that brings salvation, that brings deliverance, that open the prison doors, that set the captive free. Take this gospel, which is spirit and which is life. God, let it go into their body. Let it go into their home. Let it go into their situations. Let it go ahead of them this year. Let it prepare them for whatever is out there. Let it build them on this foundation. Let it establish them upon Jesus, this rock. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for the word. Hallelujah. Amen.